Hey guys, welcome to today's video. Today we are doing something a little bit different. I'm going to start a new segment on my channel to be uploaded on Thursdays and they'll upload every other Thursday and we're going to do some throwback Thursdays and that's what the segment's going to be called. And I thought it would be fun to do some looks for you guys with some products that were really popular launches but a while ago. So today we're going to be using the Urban Decay Naked Palette, their original Naked Palette. And I'm going to do a look for you guys with that and um, we'll just kind of chit chat. If you're interested in watching that, if you are interested in doing some looks with some super popular launches that were from a little while ago and kind of throwing it back and using up some of our makeup that we've had for a while, then make sure that you are subscribed to my channel and give this video, video a big thumbs up. Ring the bell so that your notifications are turned on and you don't miss any of my videos that I upload. Let's go ahead and get into this makeup look. Okay guys, we're going to do our eyes first today. Uh, I haven't done that on my channel yet where I do the eyes first and then show you guys how you can do your foundation afterwards. So when you do your eyes first, you don't really have to worry about fallout or being messy or anything like that. So um, it's a good technique if you're going to be doing like a really dramatic smoky eye or using some shadows that have a pretty good amount of pigmentation and you don't have to worry about messing it up or putting it out to the side, blowing it out to the side too much because you're going to go back in with your foundation and concealer and you can kind of shape that however you would like. So first let's go ahead and prime our eyes and I'm just going to use some Tarte Shape Tape to prime my eyelids. I like using the Tarte Shape Tape because it kind of dries down to almost like a powder finish and I'm not a huge fan of sticky eye primers unless I'm doing something with glitter. Um, I like something that's going to be a little bit more of a thin powder finish on my eyes to prime them. So usually when I'm doing my eyes last, I'll just go ahead and prime with my concealer and then set my eyelids down with some setting powder but this Tarte Shape Tape kind of dries to like a powder finish so I don't even really have to go in with any powder and the shadow grabs onto it really well without becoming patchy. Okay so now our eyelids are primed so let's go into the shade Naked from this palette. You do get a small little mirror in here. It's not the greatest or the biggest but it's enough to be able to see what you're doing. And I'm just going to throw that right in the crease as our transition shade. I remember when this palette came out and I was like so wanting it and waited so long to get it until it was almost discontinued because it was just really expensive. And at the time, I wasn't in the position to really spend that kind of money on makeup. This was probably the first high-end palette that I really ever purchased for myself. I would get affordable palettes from the drugstore. I would get, you know, the little palettes that come in the like free kits whenever you, you know, spend $50 and Ulta, at Ulta they give you like a free whatever. So I would use those and, you know, it was fine. Affordable shadows are not bad, but I just really wanted a high-end shadow palette. And right before this one went discontinued, it went on sale for 50% off. So I went ahead and snatched it up for half off. And I just remember being so excited. My first high-end eyeshadow palette. And it had already gotten so much hype online, so much hype on the YouTube channels and it was kind of played out, but I still was super excited to get it. And really now that I've been kind of doing my makeup more over the years and researching makeup more, 
I kind of realized like these aren't even the high-end palettes like these are the mid-level palettes the high-end palettes are like your Natasha Denona and your Pat McGrath and those palettes that are like you know 80 to 100 sometimes plus dollars to get <clears throat> but for me this was exciting because to me this was an expensive palette at the time so I'm going to dip back into that same naked shade and I'm just going to take it on a smaller blending brush and kind of build up that intensity. I'm just using circular motions. I'm going to take a tiny bit of that and just pop it on the lower lash line. We'll come back to that lower lash line later as well. So now I'm going to go into the shade Buck, which is, there's Naked that we just used in our crease, and now we're going to go down to the shade Buck, which is a little bit darker. And we're going to take that on this Morphe 431. It's just a compact blending brush. I'm just going to generously dip into that shade and we're going to kind of stamp it on the very outer edge and also stamp it in the crease. So it's a very similar tone to Naked. It's just a little darker. This is a really good neutral, pa neutral palette if that's the kind of eye looks you guys like. You take a little bit of that darker shade and just put it right on the edge of the lower lash line. So now let's um, go back into our fluffier blending brush and let's kind of buff. We're going to dip a tiny bit into Buck and we're going to kind of buff that where we just stamped it on. All right, so that's what that's looking like. There's not any other darker matte shades in this palette. So as you can see from half baked all the way to gunmetal, they are either a metallic or a shimmer. You've got this shade Dark Horse which has a tiny tiny bit of shimmer and then you've got Creep which is a black with a tiny little bit of reflect in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take Dark Horse and use Dark Horse to kind of darken up that outer edge because it doesn't have a ton of shimmer in it. And I'm just going to take it on a little brush and I'm just going to stamp it onto that outer edge. I'm going to dip into Hustle, which is a tiny bit darker, also not a ton of reflect. And when you use a tiny brush like this, it kind of flicks off the reflect. Now I'm going to take a clean brush like this and I'm just going to buff out the edges. And just really diffuse it out. And I'm not worried about any fallout or any weirdness over here because I am still going to do my foundation and clean that up. So now let's go into some of the metallics. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this shade Smog right here. And I am going to go in with my finger and I'm going to go right on the outer edge of my eye with that darker color. And just kind of build the intensity, dip back in if you need to. Okay. So now I'm going to go into Half Baked, which is kind of a golden metallic, and I'm going to go onto that with my middle finger, and I'm just rubbing it in the pan. I'm going to go right in the center of the eyelid, and then we're going to kind of pat to blend those two together. Now I'm going to take Sidecar right here, and I'm going to take that on my pinky finger, and we're going to go right into the edge here in the inner corner. So what I did by doing that was I went backwards through the palette and kind of created an ombre effect with the metallics. So a palette like this 
usually is organized kind of like from your lightest shade all the way to your darkest shade here and so it's kind of easy to you know when you want to do like more of a gradient effect you can kind of go boom 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 and then we'll put this one on the brow bone I'm just gonna go through and just kind of like redefine all of those little colors and kind of just blend them together. I'm going to take a blending brush, a fluffy blending brush, and I'm going to dip into Buck and Dark Horse and I'm going to redefine the crease. Now I'm going to take a clean brush, buff out the edges, and really make sure everything's nice and blended. Now I'm going to take a flat brush and I'm going to go into this shade called a Virgin. It's the lightest matte in the palette. And I'm going to put that right on my brow bone. I'm going to take this blend, clean blending brush and blend that in. Then I'm going to take my fingertip into the shade Sin. And I'm going to pop that on the brow bone as our brow bone highlight. I'm going to take a little bit out on my finger and just kind of pop it in the inner corner like that. Now I'm going to take a little compact blending brush. I'm going to go into Naked and Buck. And I'm going to go right on the lower lash line and just smoke out the lower lash line. So that is going to be our eye look completed um, and I know it looks a little crazy but you guys just have to trust the process because right now it doesn't look very good because there's not any other makeup done. I'm going to take a fluffy brush and brush away all the fallout, the loose pieces and then we are going to finish up, I'll finish up the other eye and I'll finish up the rest of my makeup. And then I'll be back to show you guys the completed look with this throwback palette.
I tried out some new lashes from Kiss. These are the Faux Mink Little Black Dress Lashes, and they are beautiful. I really, really like them. Um, they look super natural, but also full at the same time. So I'll be using those again for sure. Um, and I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. I had a lot of fun just playing with some makeup that I've had for a little while that was really super popular back in the day and um, just creating a look for you guys and kind of doing a little throwback with some of the popular palettes from a couple of years ago. So I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.